150th contact. Saturday, October 10, 1981, 3.15 m. Billy Mann, you really lucky that I had been resting on the sofa. What would you have done if I had been resting in bed? Quetzal says then I would have called you. Billy says you really good. Quetzal says I must speak the same words to you, but as a reproach. Billy says I don't understand. What have I done that is crooked? Quetzal says you people ignore the ordinal rules once again. Billy says not that I know of, my son. Quetzal says what reasons exist then for the fact that Thomas doesn't handle his night watch as the ordinal rules prescribe? Billy says but Quetzal, the ordinal rules actually state that group members who don't reside in the center only have to perform a night watch if they remain in the center for a night. Quetzal says that is correct, so why is this then being transgressed? Billy says now, I really don't understand, because Thomas did go home at around 12.00 am, as was explicitly clarified according to the instructions that were given on last Saturday at the group meeting. Quetzal says you shouldn't speak an untruth, or are you actually not aware that Thomas is staying with Kay? Billy says I don't understand that because only about 20 minutes ago, I took another short tour around the house and didn't see a light in her room. Quetzal says so that's why you thought that Thomas was no longer present. I understand. But this isn't the case, and this isn't good because the whole thing, even in and of itself, is not right and there are unreal feelings behind this. Billy says but that's not our matter not something we should be concerned about. Quetzal says you right, we must not do that but I would like to address the fact that through this unreality, a neglect of duty appears that should not be allowed to appear. After Saturday's explanation of these things, it would have been Thomas' duty to report to the night watch. And as I have determined this isn't the first time for him that such a neglect of a duty has appeared. Especially with regard to cooperation, my results showed that he is a shirker, if I want to clarify using your earthly vocabulary. This must be made clear to Thomas by the responsible ones on the board of directors still today, whereby you should make sure yourself that in the early morning hours, Thomas is pulled here to work as the ordinal rules prescribe. Billy says I am very sorry, this is embarrassing for me, but I knew nothing about this. And I suppose that also M and D have no idea of the fact that Thomas is with K. Quetzal says that should hence correspond to the truth, but I must ask you to pass along a further duty to M and D, which is that they make certain that Thomas performs his proper night watches if he has not left the center at around midnight, whereby no leeway of time is to be left open. Midnight should and must be kept punctual. Moreover, the ordinal rules stipulate that all group members residing abroad have to complete an entire night watch, always then, when they stay in the center at night. This means that if a group member resides elsewhere, but nevertheless, for each night or several nights stays at the center, that he she then has to take over a full night watch every single night that the group member remains in the center. Billy says but this is simply impossible because on the following day, the people either have to go abroad again or else have to work in the center. Quetzal says that is correct, yet, whoever of the group members can find the time to spend each night or several nights per week in the center in spite of the daily work and the entire studies, which are in no way easy, then he or she can also perform the night watch. In other words, this also means that the, over the years, very arduously developed order is not to be broken again, and thereby, the extremely illogical and emotionally decided unreal aberrations etc. will be prevented, or will at least arrive in forms that slowly create sound clarity. Billy says okay, okay, I can't go up against your logic because it couldn't be any sharper. But with that what you have said, it should now indeed be sufficient. Quetzal says unfortunately, not yet, because concerning Thomas, I still have to address the ordinal rule which states that 30 minutes after an appearance in the center, work must be taken up. 
This also always applies in the evening if the other group members are also still working, since Thomas has to lend them a hand as a group member. Billy says this should really be understandable because this point is also clearly stated in the ordinal rules and the house rules. Quetzal says for Thomas, it must be specifically explained once more. On the other hand, through this it must also be made clear to him that all the rules and regulations are valid for him as well into which all group members are arranged, and through those alone, order could be created and can be maintained. Absences from his side cannot receive any consideration at all and neither can exceptions or special rights. The peril of such things would be much too great because immediate rebellion and renewed destructive moods would be the consequence. Billy says I know, therefore, I will take the necessary action immediately in the morning. Quetzal says that is good. Billy says presumably, but I would like to sleep a little bit before that. Quetzal says but I will have to speak for two to three hours with you. Billy says then it should just be so. Quetzal says after that I will then carry out a time shift, so that you can actually still put your pate to rest. Billy says very nobly expressed. But if that is so, then I would still have a few more questions. Quetzal says yes. Billy says of course. First can you give me information concerning to what extent the other two Pleiadian groups in America and in Asia sustain contacts with Earth people? Quetzal says there are none since the last spring, and it will remain so until the middle of 1982. Billy says aha, then they all went away also? Quetzal says that is correct. Billy says and when they were still here, how was it? Quetzal says their contacts with Earth people, without exception, took place in such ways that none of the contact persons had any knowledge of the fact that they stood in contact with our members. Physical or visual visionary contacts were strictly avoided and also none of this kind took place. Not one of the contact persons had any knowledge or suspicion that they were under our contacts, neither in America nor in Asia. Only here in Europe do we maintain physical contact with you and also those telepathic contacts, about which you are informed. Billy says aha, and now what about this why were all of the stations evacuated, and where have your people gone? Quetzal says you have never asked about such things until now. Billy says I know, for I am also not curious about these things. It would now be interesting for us to know why such displacements of persons are taking place with you, or does it deal here with a secret? Quetzal says it does not deal with such. I'm just puzzled by your question because hitherto you've kept yourself away from such questions. Not only did we have to remove all of our available forces from the earth, but also from many other worlds, including Era. We need all available forces because the population of an entire system, which includes 16 inhabited planets and three suns, has prepared itself to a space traversal in a warlike manner because its system is sinking into a downfall. The targets of these still war accustomed humans are the habitable planets of the most diverse constellations, whereby also the Sol system and, hence, the Earth is included. These rather inhumane human life forms are willing to kill the inhabitants of their selected planets, in order for them to win their own habitat. On the one hand, our forces are now preventing these life forms from realizing their plans of breaking out into space, but on the other hand, our forces more systematically settled the populations of those various endangered planets onto uninhabited but well inhabitable areas, while another part of our forces search for new inhabitable and suitable planets, where the rest of these people can be situated and resettled. Billy says incredible, but can't the Lyrians and the Vagans give you any assistance in this? Quetzal says we also have many forces of theirs involved in this task, another part of them will take over the tasks on Earth at the end of this month, as I already explained to you earlier. Billy says I know, you spoke of the fact that Manara's father, her brother, and her sister will come here, together with 35 others. 
Quetzal says that is correct, but these 38 persons only represent the first wave, which will take over our own station and our tasks. Our and both of those other stations, America and Asia, will be fully occupied with our allies. Billy says therefore with the Vagans and the Lyrians and, are they all of a different color? Quetzal says you would say that they are chocolate brown. Billy says but that is a joyful surprise. But say, since we are already talking about people of different colors did you in the meantime find out more about the origin of the Chinese and the Japanese? Quetzal says unfortunately no, and for now we have to suspend this research. However, we are close to the goal, and we will inform you as soon as we have a definitive result. Billy says I just wanted to know. Then still another question check once in my office. There is a drawing by Lee Elders on that small brown table. He drew me a boomerang-like ship of unknown origin. Such ships supposedly have been sighted recently and, in the bygone months, repeatedly in America, whereby these should display a completely black color and have enormous headlights in operation at night. Is that known to you, and if so, what explanations can you give me in relation to this? Quetzal says I see here the paper that you mentioned on my view screen, and I can also explain a few things about this to you the drawing is incorrect because these aircraft are much less cuneiform than how the drawing represents them. The wing-like sides of the bodies, therefore, are further apart. The sizes of these devices vary between a few meters and several hundred meters. The building material is of an extremely hard and resistant material, in contrast to our materials, which are of a soft form. Moreover, these aircraft are, as you already mentioned, for the most part black, but they have other colors, which evidently were not observed, and which are usually also drowned out by the black. Unfortunately, we cannot clarify the origin of these aircraft, which we have observed and monitored for 11 years because there is no possibility that we can form a connection with the passengers of these devices. The aircraft are so designed that all of our attempts of communication have failed because our waves and vibrations and all other equivalent types have been absorbed by the outer hulls of the devices. No radio waves and no other kinds of vibrations are capable of penetrating into these aircraft because the outer hulls of each device absorb everything in terms of power storage for the ship's propulsion and everything else. This means, among other things, that these aircraft are so designed that they absorb all waves of all frequencies and, therefore, all vibrations of all kinds for power storage like also sunlight and all there with occurring radiations, etc. But the moonlight and the weak light of the stars are also absorbed and stored as power, together with many other things, which are still unknown to the earthly scientists. It is certain, however, that the life forms controlling these aircraft are humane and reveal no hostility at all, which is flawlessly evident by our 11-year-long observation and monitoring. Billy says that is so incredible, and you have until now found no means of getting in contact with these newts. Quetzal says no, until now, we have found no means. Perhaps we can still succeed in this, if... Billy says you think that will happen if they will still be on Earth for long enough and fly through our airspace. Quetzal says exactly, but now... I would like to explain to you the following predictions for the following years. The last predictions were mainly only for one year, so until the month October of 1981, because Semyaza had to return early from her contact with you, even though it was intended for her to give you predictions that were calculated for several years. Billy says that is, on the one hand, of interest, but on the other hand, I often wonder whether these predictions have a point at all. Quetzal says sooner or later, successes will appear from this. Billy says you mean after the arrival of the events. Quetzal says yes, and actually only at a much later time. But let me now begin the statements of Semyaza ended with the assassination of Sadat, who, by you and with my assistance, was still warned when I brought you to him on July 28th. The next event now which will already very soon take place, will concern this time, 
in a less sensational form, the Israeli political murderer Moshe Dayan, who will already in a few days from now die a natural death. Subsequently, in many places on the earth, earthquakes will be recorded again on several occasions, those which will eventually lead to the large earthquake disaster, about which it should not be talked about for now. The next spectacular event will take place on October 28 in Sweden. It will be that a submarine of the USSR must be raised by the Swedish Navy in Swedish waters because the boat will be operating espionage in their waters. Through the inattention of the navigational forces, the submarine will come into distress, after which it will then be tugged by the Swedish Navy. This would be, in and of itself, a political trifle, but the fact that the submarine will carry atomic weapons on board will become known which will lead to a great deal of political turbulence. Only, the 6th of November will set a preliminary end for this event, when on this day, the USSR submarine is led back out from the waters of the Swedish Highness. Then, on the 31st of October, Switzerland will run into turmoil because in Kaiser Augusta, for Swiss conditions, large-scale demonstration of 20,30s people will take place. This demonstration will be directed against the construction of the nuclear power plant, which will be approved for construction by the Swiss Federal Council in spite of all of the citizen protests against the building, which represents a crime against people, country, culture, fauna, and flora, just like any other construction of such plants, which never find arguments for justifiability. Billy says in regards to this, I would like to set a question is there actually no possible way to use atomic energy without having big dangers thereby arise for humans, animals, and plants, etc.? Quetzal says this possibility exists, and it is also used by us. The Earth human, however, is not yet in a position to do this. Nevertheless, he still works negligently and completely irresponsibly with atomic energy, whereby through this, he consciously produces deadly dangers for all life forms. In every respect, nuclear energy may only be used by humans then, when all occurring substances and waste can completely riskless be utilized and processed as far, as to ensure that absolutely radiation-free matter emerges from it. But this is only possible through a process of change, that changes the radioactive radiation back into the original mass, through which means the feedstock again emerges. Now, if the human works with or uses radioactive materials before he is capable of the process of changing back into original matter, then he acts in ways that are criminal and that violate the laws of nature. Billy says but how are then the energy problems supposed to be solved? Quetzal says each planet always provides its life forms with enough natural energy sources that don't entail risks. A stipulation for this, however, is that the planet disposes the normal population size and does not become subject to overpopulation. The Earth is now, with approximately 4 billion humans 1981, overpopulated and has gotten completely into disorder by the greed for power, greed for profit and greed for luxury of the earth human. If the earth human would be reasonable and would introduce an appropriate birth stop, then within a short period of time, a reduction of earthly humanity, back to the normal level of 529 million, could be accomplished. The energy problem would therewith be resolved in a natural way as well as the problem of the procurement of food. But the stupidity of the earth human is boundless in this respect because without any responsibility he violates all laws of nature, whereby he is also not responsive to the termination of this problem, whereupon yet the false humanness comes, which still protects and promotes this crime of overpopulation, as also the problem of famine, etc. alone the return to the normal population of earthly humanity would be the correct and only solution to solving the energy and food problems. Everything else are always only illogical partial solutions, which show illogical effects from illogical origins. Billy says but even from the way things are today, there ought to be a solution in order to solve these problems. Quetzal says that is correct, but these solutions can only be time conditioned because problems continue to grow by the further increasing overpopulation and, thus, 
by the greed and unreasonableness of the earth human. Therefore, it would be totally wrong if I would mention and explain those possibilities, which actually exist, in order to solve these problems with the energy and the food thoroughly. We can only then involve ourselves with mentioning of such possibilities, when the earth human strives for a drastic reduction and a natural decimation of the planetary humanity to the normal state. Only then could we show possible solutions to the problems, so that these problems would be actually resolved during the reduction. Billy says with the irrational insanity of the people of earth, this will not be able to be the case because they will not let themselves be taught. Quetzal says earth humanity drives itself thereby into a helpless abyss. But the earth human should not die out and be destroyed, which is why appropriate measures must be taken. Billy says and how should these look, then? Quetzal says as crazy as it sounds, with the knowledge about the earthly overpopulation a new people must be established. But it must be a people that lives in accordance with the natural creational laws, making it the role model for the large mass of stupefied earth humanity and affects them instructively. I will give you more specific information about this at a later date, in connection with other matters that refer to your group. Billy says ah, this is already clear you think that our group will be the basic core of this new people, through the constantly new group members and their descendants. Quetzal says that is correct, and with the approval of the High Council, we are at it already, for quite some time allowing the emergence of this new people as a basic core. Billy says this is known to me. Some things have already been done, while the rest is still to follow, whereby already the next year brings again another increasing growth in a manifold form, if I am not mistaken. But the planned process will still take many centuries, if it lets itself be fulfilled at all, because the inflow to the group will be slight for a long time, so the group will only grow slowly. Quetzal says it is foreseen and intended as such, but we indeed have some trouble in keeping the explanations in a good framework, because the group members themselves still think irrationally about these things. Their mental attitude, their false views and the like, make everything more difficult for us, even though everything would be fairly easy if we could act after that which corresponds to rightness. But for the time being, we are still dependent on manipulations, which don't bring the desired full success, which means that we often have to accept actions, for which we have to expend all kinds of efforts, but we can't guarantee that a full success can be achieved. Billy says I understand, and I know where the problem is. Quetzal says yes, the problem is well known to you, but we should now speak again of other things because I still have much to explain until the 29th of November, nothing of major importance will report itself worldwide, barring the unnecessary noise around Poland. The 29th of November, however, will then again bring an event that will be broadcasted by the publication sectors of the people, even though it deals with an entirely natural incident. On this day in America, the actress Natalie Wood will be pulled dead from the sea, in which she will drown after being in a marriage dispute and in a drunken state. Again, after that, not much will arise of significance until finally a point is reached in Poland which intensifies things. General Jaruzelski will impose martial law on the country in order to prepare the end for the, several years long, destructive bustle of large masses of the population and for the politically subversive trade union, whose head is Lech Wałęsa. As usual, the earth people don't see the truth here also, which is why they cling to the trade union party and cry according to a false humanitarianism. That these rebels truly want to seize power in the country, that they are work shy, and that they have, for many years, forced the entire country and the entire population into distress and misery and into hunger and financial ruin through evil compulsions, are things which nobody wants to see or recognize. It will come so, as it must come, which will unfortunately cost many human lives. Indeed, in Poland, the prevailing force of a large part of the people and of the trade union solidarity can only, in turn, be broken by force. Unfortunately, through the mania of the false humanness of the Western world, also for Poland, 
an unjustified party will be embraced, Farrell which especially the leadership of the Polish army and the leadership of the USSR are once again sanctioned unrightfully. With the Earth humans, the sense of true humanity has already been lost for a long time unfortunately, which is why, once again, completely wrong politics will operate here also, whereby the truth is completely unrecognized and the fallible are placed into an unwarranted and false good light, so namely the trade union solidarity and its attached work shy group which know no boundaries in their greed for money and power. The western countries and people, however, do not want to see this truth, which is why they will through the falsely understood humanness, seek to put the blame on the leaders of Poland and Russia, but who in this case, really do not bear guilt at all. Not lastly but rather in the first place, the American President Reagan will bear the guilt for this false humanity and anti-propaganda against the governments of Poland and Russia, who behaves in his office like a little rascal and will impose dangerous sanctions against Russia and Poland. Billy says but there is nothing else to be expected because you once explained that Reagan will be the real fundamental reason for the next world arms race. Quetzal says that is correct because he will be the presently biggest warmonger and power greedy man since the time of the last world war. This will, however, affect him dearly malign, about which I will give you the necessary information, but at a later date. His last departure will be so inglorious, as also the abolition of sanctions imposed by him and the regulation of the crisis in Poland. Billy says that will indeed be inevitable. But please say, how it will look for the whole world this winter, which would be something of greater interest than stupid and primitive politics. Quetzal says all kinds of things brew themselves together the whole of Europe and very large parts of America will get flooded by enormous masses of water that will cause material damage in billion fold dollar amounts, as well as demand very many human lives. Especially Switzerland, Germany, England, France, and America will have to suffer under massive floods, which will bury and destroy very much, but which constitutes only a small part of everything that this winter brings with itself. Besides tremendously large snowfalls, the clouds will open their sluices for very large amounts of hail, which also points that unusual cold spells are to be anticipated, like the people of these affected areas only very rarely experience when nature calls forth for natural changes. But all the events of this winter, as the preceding and the ones still to follow, are not just attributable to natural events alone, but also to the outrageous unreasonableness of the earth human against nature, etc. In certain areas, the temperatures will drop down to 60 degrees Celsius below zero and further, and will freeze everything. The average degree of coldness, however, will be from 30 to 40 degrees below zero in various areas in Europe and America, which means the death and destruction of many human lives and animals, as well as crops, etc. And these cold spells won't stop before reaching the more southern regions, whereby, in particular, the American vacation paradise of Florida, etc. will be drawn heavily into the detrimental effects of the destruction and the cold weather. However, Australia will also have to suffer, particularly from a large drought, but also from major water ingresses. All of this, though, won't yet mean the end or the contentment of this winter because partly quite vicious earthquakes will also occur around the world at this time, whereby especially America will be the land where most quakes will appear, next to North Africa, Italy, Oceania, and Japan, as well as China and Russia. But virtually all countries of the world will be shaken by lesser and greater quakes, whereby in different places, also volcanic eruptions will thereby come to light, which are, as well, partly due to the crazy human effort of destroying the earth, but especially in recent years, the atomic bomb tests, etc. have contributed a large part to the release of these events. The end of the winter, 
then, which still entails many other bad events, will also demand many human lives and material values again because the snow melt will not only cause massive avalanches to descend and to destroy very much, but also floods will appear through massive snow melts, as well as landslides that will destroy much, from which even Switzerland won't remain spared. However, such events already set themselves in even before the middle of winter is reached, and they will continue well into the third millennium and will bring death, destruction, and annihilation. Billy says the prospects are so beautiful, man oh man. Apparently, we can prepare ourselves for some, great, things in the next year, and in the coming decades, as well as in the new millennium. Quetzal says the center will not be drawn very hard into these detrimental effects. As you know, it is located very safely, which is also the case in terms of weather influences. Even though you are located over 800 meters high in elevation, nevertheless, the cold weather will not attack you as much as will be the case in the lower situated and other regions. Your seat is on the hill of a cirque, which not only diverts storms, snow, and rain to very large parts around you, but also protects you against two large break-ins of coldness, which are driven off in large part around the ridge of hills. I estimate that at your location, the average minimum temperatures will be about 18 degrees below zero, but in very extreme cases they will drop to about 29 degrees below zero, yet this is hardly to be expected due to the protective ridge of hills all around. However, a direct polar cold air wedge from the north would have to penetrate here if it should become colder than negative 18 degrees or if the minimum mark should actually be exceeded. Everywhere outside of your cirque, it will normally be very much colder than it will be with you, which can be a comfort to you. You really have a good seat in many relations. Billy says we have already noticed that, especially during storms and hurricanes, for they have almost always deviated around the hill crests also the hail weather. Quetzal says as I said, you live in a good place, even if it can't be excluded with certainty that one kind of weather or another cannot fall into your cirque, but this will be a rarity. Billy says I also said that we know that. We repeat ourselves. Quetzal says that is correct. So once again, let's speak of other things. Billy says that should be the right way. But if you allow it, then I would have another question. Quetzal says of course, then ask. Billy says good, what do you think about this you told me months ago that I should prepare a peace writing and should deliver it to all governments and peace movements. You also said that you would be helping me with this, but I still haven't seen anything of it. On my side, I also haven't found the time yet to get myself behind this task. How would it be now if someone from the group or even several members together would write up such a script, after which the two of us could then get together and put it into the proper form? Wouldn't this be an acceptable proposal? Quetzal says the idea is good because admittedly, I haven't yet found the necessary time to dedicate myself to this task. Your proposal would free both of us from a lot of work if at least the concept of the script would be drafted by one or more group members. Billy says then I will see to it that this is undertaken. Quetzal says also, the new sporadic writing is due. Billy says I know, and I hope that I will still finish the first edition before the first quarter is over. Quetzal says that would be very gratifying. But listen now further to what I still have to report to you about the future namely, a great deal will occur, but no influences will arise from the soul lineup of celestial bodies in the month of March 1982 since all soul celestial bodies are on an earth lateral course and are, thus, in a short angle on the side of the sun. All of the celestial bodies are too far away from the earth that they would have even the slightest direct influences on the earth and its life forms. And as you know, there only arise change phenomena of the central sun vibrations and the central sun radiations, which exhibit only a pure astrological value, which means that they, as pure neutral central sun forces, exhibit only a variable value for the life forms, which use these in negative or positive forms. 
Billy says that is clear to me, but since we are already talking about celestial bodies, I still have another question concerning Saturn. As is known to you, the American space probe, Voyager, travels past Saturn and sends recorded images to Earth. This will give the scientists large eyes once more, as was already the case with Jupiter, because inevitably, they will have to recognize once more from the recordings, that also around this not mature dwarf sun more satellites orbit than what was previously assumed. To my knowledge, it has been argued until now that Saturn only has its 10 or 12 moons, although, it is true that there are 29, if I omit the Adonidon. Now, it would interest me whether all these moons will be discovered by the picture transmissions of probes, etc. Quetzal says it will be so and still more. As you already could conclude by yourself on your great voyage, at the place and location, there evolve around Saturn 29 moons that are actually to be beholded as such. These are expected to be discovered in their entire number in approximately up to 25 years by probes and by telescopes. But in truth, there aren't any more so many that can still be discovered up to this number because since your journey to Saturn, the Earth scientists have discovered a few more moons, but which apparently slipped past you during the last few years. After the discovery of the moons around Jupiter, scientists now reckon that they will also still find some undiscovered satellites around Saturn, but nevertheless, there will still be a surprise for them. Billy says do you think because of the Adonidon, which partially orbit millions of kilometers outside of Saturn? Quetzal says that is correct. These small planets, called Adonis, as you correctly say, are so small that they cannot be ascertained and seen from the Earth, at least not for the time being, because the necessary instruments for this do not yet exist. A large portion of these small planets will certainly be detected by different probes and Earth-orbiting telescopes, which will cause some confusion with the scientists. Billy says I can imagine because there is a fairly large number of them that orbit Saturn besides the few small wandering Adonidon, which only pass by this sole satellite from time to time. But I can well understand that they are not visible from the Earth because on average, they only exhibit a diameter of between roughly 10 to 50 kilometers if I still correctly remember what Patai and Semyazar explained to me back then in the year 1975. In addition, there are still some smaller as well as larger ones present in huge distances from Saturn. Quetzal says that is correct, but it should also be known to you from where these Adonidon arrived at Saturn. Billy says of course. Back then, Semiaza said that these small satellites, in part, come from larger fragments of the planet Malona, which had its course between Mars and Jupiter before it was destroyed by an explosion that was unreasonably generated by the local people and was torn into thousands of pieces. While the bulk of the destroyed planet revolves around the Sun as an asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, some small groups of Adonidon have isolated themselves and have flown off into space by the expansion forces of the planet's explosion, whereby a larger group of these then arrived into the attractive forces of Saturn which keeps them since then as microsatellites, which also means that these are not actual moons of the unfinished sun planet but are just foreign bodies that have immigrated and that are the size of Adonis while the number of actual moons of Saturn is only 29. Quetzal says that is correct, but let's leave it at that because I still have other things to explain to you. The time following the previously mentioned events will bring with it a short-term break from larger or larger events. Even natural disasters will hold themselves within a small frame because besides some earthquakes and floods, not much will happen related to this, other than in China, Japan, and also Mexico, where a larger quake will make itself noticeable with human losses. In the month of May, Europe will be the next in the row in this regard whereby especially Germany will be the central point, but without major damages. On the other hand, winter will shortly break in again in different European areas once it becomes supposed by the people that this would already be passed. Namely, 
Until about the 10th of May, snowfall will appear again in Switzerland, in Germany, and in other European countries. After spring has allowed its splendor of flowers, but there will be no serious damages. Towards the end of April or the beginning of May, the Pope of Rome will again dissipate the monies of his believers, because once again he will begin an extremely expensive trip to different countries, which will cost many millions of dollars. Thus, he will also visit Portugal, where he will hypocritically let it be announced that the Madonna of Fatima had protected him, helping him survive the assassination attempt that had been perpetrated on his life. However, with this consciously mendacious and fraudulent allegation to his believers, he will encourage the hatred of a Catholic priest of a different faith, who will want to kill him and will attack him with a dagger, but this will be thwarted by security personnel before the priest arrives in the direct vicinity of the Pope. After his stay in Portugal, the Pope will proceed to England which will be reckoned as a sensation because, since the secession of the English Anglican Church from Rome, no Pope has ever given more effort for the English Church in this manner. In truth, the whole journey of the Pope to England, however, will not serve for Christian connecting relations or for the renewed alliance of the Roman and English Churches the Pope will untruthfully make known. Firstly because it will only concern his personal image which he wants to strengthen and to develop, and secondly it is also about the intrigue machinations of bringing the English church back under the upper rule of the Roman papacy. Billy says I think that the present Pope is disgust inciting, mendacious, hypocritical, one who deliberately misleads the people and is a toadying pulpit creep, who only wants to lead an eye's life and make a name for himself. At the same time, when I think of other popes then I must say that different ones among them at least still believed in what they said and did, while this pope is only pretending, although, he is a damn bad actor. Quetzal says your words are appropriately correct, but this pope will not be able to exercise his evil doings much longer. Namely, through his criminal doings, he also has already predetermined his end but about that, I want to make no particulars at the moment. Rather, it is appropriate that I tell you that this fraudulent man is now scheming to also visit your homeland, Switzerland, where he will be present in Geneva and continue to perform his acting. Besides this, he will also strive to arrive in Argentina in order to break in on the population with his dishonest manner regarding the war between Argentina and England. During the month of April 1982, the Argentinians will militarily garrison the Falkland Islands, which are under the English colony, whereupon England will then send out a fleet, through which a veritable guerrilla war will emerge between both countries, which will demand many human lives and war material. This war will be a sign of the threatening Third World conflagration in the third millennium. Moreover, this will also be the actual fundamental point for the fact that in this world war, if it cannot be prevented, England will come under attack from the east with great power. But this still lies in the far future, and if it should get so far, then nobody will search for the grounds for the attack on England in this forthcoming Falkland conflict, that will erupt in the month April of 1982, although, in truth, the origin will lie there. Billy says this bratty girl Thatcher and the rascals of the Argentinian army are responsible for this, right? Someone should lead them all to a public place in front of a worldwide television camera, pull down their pants, put them over the knee, and give them a good textbook example spanking. Quetzal says you amuse me, but it would truly be a very effective solution because it would then be impossible for them to be in their positions, which they are unable to perform anyways. Billy says altogether, they are truly not at all adults but rather regular rascally boys and girls, even snotty-nosed little boys and girls. Quetzal says your direct expressions are very appropriate, and there is not a single mature person among them, as is the case with most of the other rulers of the earth. Billy says finally an open word relating to this.